our final segment, we're going to do a devotional. This Sunday is Transfiguration Sunday. This is the last Sunday of the Ordinary Time uh, season, and uh, the next season is Lent, which will begin on Ash Wednesday, which will be this upcoming Wednesday. Um, and so one of the texts, of course, the story of Transfiguration is found in Mark, but one of the complementary texts is found in 2 Corinthians. And it's going to talk to us about this connection with Moses. So if you um, want to look this up in your own Bibles, it's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'll be reading verses 12 and then into chapter 4 through verses 6. So chapter 3, 12 through chapter 4, verse 6. And the text reads, Since then we have such hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses who put on a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, the same veil is still there, since only in Christ it is set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image. I have lost it, I'm sorry. Being transformed in the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. And it's quite a long passage, and actually the lectionary has a much shorter segment, but you really have to read that passage in its fullest context to understand it. And that is the theme that God has always been redeeming. God has always been love. And that's something we have to be careful of, especially when we're reading Old Testament and New Testament passages. We, we create this false dichotomy in our minds that somehow God was different, interacted with the world differently. But anyways, the gospel, the good news of transformation has been proclaimed since the foundations uh, of the earth were laid. And yet people have only caught a glimpse at the heart of God. Israel, the people of God, saw the might and authority of God at Mount Sinai, but even then they had no personal interaction with Yahweh. Their encounter God was mediated through their leader Moses, and even then Moses had to veil his face because God's glory was just too much for the people. And then something truly magnificent happened. The Word became flesh and walked amongst the people. God's love and power was no longer hid behind a curtain or demonstrated it just through laws and rituals. Jesus, fully God and fully human, was the living, breathing revelation of God. And so what was this revelation? What was this veiled gospel now made plain? It is this, that God and humanity could live in perfect relationship with one another. Each human can be made righteous with God, humanity, creation, and even within themselves. Transformation is not just something that will affect a religious part of people's lives. It's not just something that gets practiced on Sundays or Wednesdays. But this kind of transformation impacts every aspect, and that every aspect can be dedicated to God. And this is something interesting in the last part of it that says that the same God who spoke light into darkness, the same God who was creating order out of chaos at the beginning of creation, is the same one who every day speaks light and order into the chaos of our own lives. And we don't have to seek secret wisdom or hoard knowledge. Instead, it is freely given, and so abundantly so, that it spills out of our lives, illuminating our world. We are transformed, glory unto glory. Glory that is not for ourselves, but that can be our own, because we have been transformed into the same character, love, and attitude that is found in Christ Jesus. All right. 
Well, thank you for sharing that with us, Amanda. And we're going to go ahead and wrap up our program today. Again, you can find our free podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or CastBox. Personally, I really like CastBox. And please download us and take us with you wherever you go. And if you really enjoy the program, please leave a comment or please leave us a review. Take a copy, a link to our program, and share it with people you know. That will help us out tremendously. If you want to help us out, please do help us out in the just simple manner of sharing our content. And on, on that note, we are Nazarene ministers with the Church of the Nazarene. I should, should clarify that. And a lot of times people ask me, sometimes you see me with the clergy call on. It sort of depends on what activities of the week are going on. We do hope that you enjoyed our program, and please have a blessed day.